All right, guys, we are going to take a look at your how to how do substances dissolve worksheet. This is the FET simulation on salt versus sugar. Um, we are going to follow along with the paper that you have. If you're doing it at home and you have the paper printed, um, you just write it on there. If not, um, just recreate the boxes and stuff the best you can and your drawings and everything. Um, and that will be fine. So we're going to start looking um, at salt versus sugar. So you might have dropped salt in water before and we see that when we do that, it kind of disappears, right? We don't see it anymore. Um, and then if we put sugar into water, we get the same kind of idea, right? It just disappears. So we want to see what's actually happening with these. Are they similar to each other? Or are they different? And um, get some data for ourselves. Now, we're going to go ahead and remove that sugar I put in. We just have salt. Add a little more. Um, and one thing, one property we can look at with this is conductivity. So this is like a little battery system. When we have it outside of the water, um, and we've got these two electrodes there, the light bulb does not light. But when we put it into this, we see that it lights up. So let's remove our salt and see what happens. When we have no salt, it doesn't light up. But when we add the salt we get it lighting up and when we add more salt, it conducts even more. So that's an interesting um, thing is that our salt can conduct electricity when we put it in water. Now let's try sugar. Again, water by itself does not conduct. And when we add sugar, we get no response. So there's something different going on with these two um, based on that data alone. So we're going to zoom in into our micro view. Oops. Um, let me reset all of this and we'll take a look. So ignore what you saw there. Um, so we're going to start on the top four boxes on your paper. We're going to start with the left-hand column with sodium chloride. So we're going to start first by just shaking some out and then I'm going to pause right before it's the water. Um, so we can see that we've got some positive or some little pink and green particles here. Um, they're all stuck to each other. So on the left or on the right side over here, we have that the pink ones are sodium ion and A plus and the green ones are the chloride ion Cl minus from sodium chloride. Now we have a whole bunch of them. They are all stuck to each other. And this is because we've got that positive and negative ions. They're going to stick. They don't just have to be one sodium and one chlorine. It creates this bigger, bigger crystal lattice that we've explored in class. We did ionic bonding. So go ahead and draw this um, in that first box on the left. Pause, get it drawn, and then hit play. All right, um, now we're going to see what happens when it goes into the water. So as it enters the water, we can see that the ions break apart from each other. So we get these positives and negatives moving around. Um, they're no longer stuck to each other, and we get this separation. So go ahead and pause and draw a picture of that in the second box. Um, so you're going down the page, the first two boxes. All right, so we have um, some terms we're going to look at. Um, dissolving versus dissociating. So dissolving is kind of what in general we call when sodium chloride or sugar or different things are put in water, they dissolve, they break apart. Now that breaking apart is what is really different here. Um, so in this case with sodium chloride, we call this dissociating. So I want you to put on the left side of those boxes, on the, maybe down the side um, next to the salt, I want you to put the word dissociate. So dissociate means that the ions break apart from each other. So we get separated positive and negative ions that are moving around. All right, now we're going to reset and see what happens with our sucrose. So again, I'm gonna shake it out and pause it. Hopefully I can do it high enough, pause. All right, so there's our sucrose. On the right, you can see that um, our key shows sucrose is this big fat molecule. So it's got 12 carbons, 22 hydrogens, and 11 oxygens. This is a big guy. Um, so we can see that separate, or that those big molecules, or those big sugar molecules, um, and they're kind of stuck to each other. So we have multiple molecules stuck to each other before they enter the water. So for your drawing for the top right box, you want to kind of do a blob with some 
it's got some red atoms, it's got some gray ones and some white ones. Um, the red is going to represent those oxygens. The gray inside, kind of towards the middle, is those carbons. Carbon really likes to be in the middle of our big molecules. And then we got these 22 hydrogens. Those are all the white little dots around it. So kind of draw your big blobby molecules there in that first one. Pause and get that drawing done. All right, so we are going to let this fall into the water and see what happens here. So immediately you hopefully see a big difference between what this looks like and what those sodium and chlorine ions look like. Instead of separating into all the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, this stays as the entire sucrose molecule. So a little bit different here. Um, so this is our molecules dissolving. They're just breaking apart from each other. They are not dissociating into ions because there are no ions present here. So we've got a difference in how they break apart in water. So pause and get this drawing done in that last box at the top. All right, we're going to take a look. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the sodium chloride in here just so we can see that nice comparison of them um, with each other. So we get those big fat sucrose molecules all moving around, and then we get those little ions moving around separating from each other. So you've got a couple questions on your page. Um, how does salt and sugar dissolve differently in water? This would be an excellent place to use those vocabulary terms, dissociate versus dissolve. And then number two, what do you think causes the difference in behavior? So I want you to think about that. Look at the chemical formulas. Look at their structures. Think about what we've learned in previous chapters. What's a big difference between these two that might cause this, this difference in how they behave? Go ahead and pause, answer those two questions, and then come back. All right, so together we are going to take a look at the next part. We're going to get more details on what's happening here. Um, so in this container, we have zoomed in. So you can see on the right, this is like our container of water. It was just kind of this light blue um, substance. Um, and now we've zoomed in. So we've looked at, we're looking at this little tiny piece of water, zooming in on that. Um, and now we can see all these little molecules moving around. So these are water molecules. Um, so imagine like a Mickey Mouse head um, and the top, the ears would be our hydrogens and the head would be our oxygen for H2O water. Um, so those are all moving around. This is liquid water. It is very um, active as a liquid. Um, so they're moving. Now they're not just flying around because this isn't a gas. They're very close to each other as you can see, but they kind of stick, right? They're moving, but they stick to each other and move around. So that's what a liquid behaves like. So now we're going to look at the molecular level. So on the left, the next set of boxes on part B, we're going to add salt. We're going to draw the molecular level of this dissolving in water and we want to color and all that. And remember, we do have colored pencils. Gave you guys all some. Hopefully, you still have them. Um, so let's add our salt in here. We've got these big old salt things. One thing I'll, you guys will notice before I drop this in is that the chlorine is big and our sodium is small. Well, our chlorine added an electron to become negative, so it filled that out our electron shell. It's going to be a little bit bigger than it normally would be in terms of its atomic radius. Sodium, though, lost an electron, right? It dropped an electron, so it dropped an entire energy level. So sodium is much smaller than it would be before that, and we explored that in ionic bonding as well. All right, here we go. Dropping it in. And I will pause this at some point before they all escape out of the view because <laughs> they will. All right. Um, let's take a look at the sodium up at the top. We're going to use, we're going to use these two at the top as our examples. Okay. So sodium at the top here, we've got Na plus and it's got all these water molecules around it. Now you'll notice that the red part, the oxygen part of the water molecule is kind of turned or attracted to that sodium ion. Well, of course there's a reason behind all of this in chemistry. Um, after you've hopefully you've watched the polarity video and done those questions and stuff and notice that water has a charge to it is polar. So the negative side is the oxygen side, that red side. So all those oxygen parts are negative just a little bit. And because they're a little bit negative, they're able to attract to that positive sodium ion. Okay. So we get this. I want you guys to go ahead and draw maybe on half that box, um, for part B. So half, 
of the left box make your sodium. So we want to draw a sodium ion, Na+, make sure you put that charge in there, that's important. And then we want to surround it by those water molecules. So you could just draw, like I said, Mickey Mouse molecules, um, but the head part should be the part that's towards that sodium because that's the part that's attracted. Okay, go ahead and get that drawing in, maybe pause and then come back. All right, so let's look at our chlorine ion. So on the right side, we, um, we also wanna add our chlorine in. Now you'll notice that chlorine is negative. It gained that electron. So it's surrounded by water molecules, just like sodium. But the positive hydrogen part, that white part, is what's attracting to that chlorine. So see all the little hydrogens that are kind of pointed towards it? That is what's happening with chlorine. Because they're positive, it's gonna attract to that negative chlorine ion. So draw that part in, that sodium with the water around it, chlorine with the water around it, maybe do you know three or four water around each of them, showing that direction with the water turned the correct direction. Now this process, this has a special name. Um, when we when we add water to ourselves, right? We drink water, we say we're hydrating. Well, this is called hydration of these ions. We're surrounding them by what with water, and that is water of hydration. So that's our sodium and chlorine. All right, we're gonna take a look now at sugar. So make sure you get those drawings in, pause if you need to, get those drawings in, and we're gonna look at sugar. All right, so I'm gonna reset. We got our water moving again. Now you'll notice these sugar molecules. I'm gonna pull them up just so you can look at them. There's these, again, big fat molecules. We've got two of them here. They're kind of stuck to each other in the middle. Um, and I have this box checked on the lower right that says sugar highlight. So it's just highlighting it so we can see where the sugar is. We will um, unhighlight it so you'll be able to see that. So let's see what happens. We put those two in there and they separate from each other. Now we can see that um, our water still starts to surround them, um, but they're not necessarily turned in any particular direction. We've got some where the oxygen is close to it, some where the hydrogens are pointing towards it. And that has to do, I'm gonna unhighlight it for a second here, with what's going on on the molecule. We've again got oxygens and hydrogens and carbons on this molecule. Well, um, there are gonna be places where on this molecule, there are some little attractions between the water and the, and the oxygens and hydrogens on the molecule. Um, those have special names for those attractions. Um, we call it intermolecular forces, and there's different names and things for them. But we're getting some attraction there. It's still able to separate the two molecules from each other, but is not able, though, to separate this molecule. We cannot break all of those covalent bonds within that molecule. So we've got our ions in the ionic bond of salt that are able to separate. We can break those apart because we're just breaking that like positive negative attraction. However, in sugar, we have covalent bonds where they're sharing those electrons, right? Single, double, triple bonds. And we can't break those apart by just adding water to it, by just putting some attraction with the water. It's not strong enough to pull that molecule apart. So our covalent bonds are much stronger than our ionic bonds here. We can see that demonstrate because the water can't separate it. So I'm just going to press play so we can kind of see them moving around. Again, you want to get your drawing in there. So if you want to do this as kind of like it shown here, like a big blob and kind of show that as your, your sugar molecule and then surround it by some water, that's fine. But again, there's no particular direction that the water are going right now. Um, if we looked at more detail, it, specific spots on the molecule we would see that there are is sort of some patterns but we can't really tell that from here so our big takeaway here is that the salt is able to dissociate into its ions and the sugar stays as the entire molecule we get a big difference there um and remember all the way back at the beginning we had the conduct, conduct conducting of electricity so our salt salt excuse me is able to conduct that electricity because it separates it to those ions all right at the bottom you have some questions so you can maybe answer those on another piece of paper um and we'll get this all into your notebooks hopefully eventually so thanks guys